Hey, welcome to another Honda Insight video. In this video, I'm not driving a car. I'm going to talk about the current hack and some of the science and results that I've experienced in having this mod on my car in just a few days. Um, let me just start by saying I uh, do not fully understand the technology being used here. I'm just taking what other people have done and I put it on the car. I've done turbos and, in and uh, in intakes and exhausts and motor mounts and pulleys and lots of you know, clean up paint work, swapping parts, but this is an area that I don't fully understand. So everything I'm saying here, uh, take it with a grain of salt. And if you want more information, I'm providing links in the description to some good reading and YouTube channels where you can learn far more about this. If you ask questions because of that, I may not be able to answer them. Uh, I just want to throw that out at the beginning. And the other thing is I, I did a little drive. It was like 20 or 30 seconds long that I posted the other day. Just to give an idea of kind of you know what's happening with this with this mod how it improved the car it's really not conclusive and the reality is that it's 34 degrees out here in georgia right now and uh, the way these work is unless the electric uh unless the battery is at 68 degrees fahrenheit it will not provide full boost so i'm still have yet to probably experience this car as the hack can uh, improve it and it's going to be cold here for the next several weeks but i will do more driving once it warms up a little more and you know probably while i'm discussing another thing that i do to the car i'll shoot some videos of um, just driving around town pov shots and kind of give you an idea of how the car accelerates now that it has this modification on it so just want to throw those things out um, i have a cheat sheet here you might want to look at i'm just going to kind of use this as my notes to talk about this mod merry christmas by the way i'm filming this on christmas morning so what is current hacking well, back in 2009, as far as I can understand it, from all the research I've done, a fellow named Peter Perkins, and he has a YouTube channel that I again have linked below, he and some other people began developing the, uh, the idea of uh, hacking this car and giving it a little more horsepower and torque um, by adding resistors to the control modules and fooling the car into thinking that it has less current flowing through it by adding resistors to the BCM. And then because of that, the car will bring itself back to a 100% level and uh, have more current flowing through it that will then give more power and torque to the wheels. That's sort of the idea. Um, they started at 10% and then 12% and 15% and 20. And the idea was to what can we safely add to the motor that will not throw any engine codes or break any of the uh, hardware. So you can read again down below. Um, basically, it was it it was they arrived at the place that understanding that a thirty percent reduction in current was the safe place where you could solder some resistors on, upgrade the fuse, close it all up, be done, and never worry about it. And that was 12, 13 years ago, and there have not been problems at that current level. So that's the plug and play safe, the full Monty, as Peter calls it. He's from the UK. So um, that's the place, that's the happy place. Now there are people that have thrown more current at it and that begins to cause problems with software and then there's ways to get around that. But I've just decided to do the plug and play uh, way to do this. And um, so again, the idea here and what I'm talking about in my car the, the, the technical accepted term is the 40% hack. Now that's 43% rounded down to 40 just for, that's the nomenclature that's being used in the first generation Insight uh, community. So this is the 40% hack. And how that's achieved, again, is by uh, fooling the car, by putting resistors on the control modules and reducing the current by 30%. What the car then does is it's from 100 down to 30, and then it compensates to get itself back up to 100%. Therefore, giving you, so if you take uh, what percentage of that 70% remaining gets you back to the 100% of current that the car wants to give to the electric motor? And the answer to that uh, is 42.8571. Again, just for communication purposes, that's been rounded down to 40%. This is the 40% hack but 42.851% of the remaining 70% of current uh, the car has after putting the resistors in, brings it back to 100%. The car has no idea what's happening. It's happy, but it's giving the motor 
more power, the electric motor, therefore giving the whole shebang more power. So that's the basic science and concept behind current hacking. You're just tricking the car into giving itself more. How do you achieve this? Um, I did it for very inexpensively. You just, you can buy a circuit board from Peter and a resistor uh, for, I mean, I don't know what he sells them now, but my price was $50 plus shipping. Um, you have to contact him for that. Um, then you've got to take the battery out. You've got to do some soldering if you're comfortable with that. I had a friend that I paid a minimal fee that we did it together and uh, took care of that. This is somebody who had done it before. I was more comfortable with that rather than trying to do this myself. And uh, so we had a lot of fun, did that, took three or four hours. Um, so basically just the resistors, and you can buy resistors, by the way. You don't need Peter's board. Again, look at the, uh, look at the uh, videos that I'm linking and stuff, and you can kind of see, you're going to have to do some research, but you'll, you'll see what's happening. Um, the resistors, I mean, you can get all the resistors for $5. Um, so, but actually just putting a board on top of it's easier. Um, and then you need a fuse, you need to upgrade a fuse because the car... Uh, comes with actually have it right here in a growing box of insight parts So this came with the car the 100 amp you need 150 amp minimum so that the car doesn't uh, Shut off because of that don't want to blow that fuse so um, Yeah, that's all you need um, and then you also actually you also need if you're doing the 30 per or the 40 percent hack uh, which I have here you need a eight amp hour battery. So mine is a Bumblebee battery, it's brand new. Uh, there's probably other places that sell that. Of course, the car comes with a 6.1 amp hour battery, which will not handle this hack. It will handle lower current hacks, but not this 40% one. Also a lithium setup will handle the 40%. Having said all that, um, what's, the, what's, the, what's the result here? So everything I'm about to say is conjecture. This is not accurate science. Um, it, what I'm thinking is if we say that 42.8% of increase in current that's being thrown at the electric motor, could we take that same 42% and simply add it to the expected power increase that the IMA motor gives? Well, maybe, but probably not. The right way to do this is put the car on a dynamometer before and after, get horsepower and torque numbers, and then you can compare, and it's data, it's objective data. Um, I, you know, a dyno visits $150 per shot for three runs. There's three hours away from where I live, plus, you know, two days of my life to do that. I don't care that much. Uh, I was just more into this for the fun. So everything I'm about to say is conjecture. It's possibly close. The other thing is, like, we don't know if the ratio of, like, if I add 42%, is it also adding 42% of actual horsepower we don't know that now the numbers are so little here i don't know that it matters that much um but let me show you kind of where i approximate things so the car and driver tells us the gas motor 67 horses and 66 pound feet uh the ima is 13 extra horses and 36 extra pound feet however because the peaks are different, so we're looking for the lowest common denominator sort of thing here. The combined output is 73 horses and 91 pound-feet. So if you take those numbers, that's 6 horses and 25 pound-feet, which I've got right here. So that's, that's our LCD, lowest common denominator of horsepower and torque addition, stock from the electric motor, and I simply, my math is, I'm just adding the 42% of current that's being added, multiplied by these numbers right here, and the result is three horses and 11 torque. Now, don't be impressed, but be impressed, because that may not sound impressive, but let me show you some, some thoughts here on there, or let me share some thoughts on this. Um, so three horsepower, is that impressive? Eh. 11 torque, is that impressive? Mm. Well. 11 torque may not seem like much, but when you have a car that's only 1,800 pounds, as this one is, and only had, where is that number? 91 foot-pounds of torque to begin with, you have added 4% horsepower and 12% torque. So, that's where you start realizing that actually is 
significant. Um, again, 12% torque. So if you took my Fiesta here, let's just take this Mazda. This is 310 foot pounds of torque. If you add 12% torque to this car, you suddenly have just added, I mean, what's 12% of 310, like 37? 37 foot pounds you can feel. And don't forget, this is over 4,000 pounds. Fiesta ST, same idea, 12%. Of course, my car's highly, modif highly modified, so this doesn't really hold. Just washed it, by the way, looking beautiful. Nothing like washing a car in the 34 degree weather. But anyway, this car out of the box is about 200 foot pounds. So if you were added at, to add 12% to that, that's 24 foot pounds of torque, which you can definitely feel. And that car's 2,700 pounds. So what we have here is an 1,800, 1800 uh, pound car and you're adding 12% torque. Again, this is conjecture. My science is not probably right, but it's the closest estimation I can do without putting it on the dyno. You add 12% torque to something that's only got 91. And that's kind of impressive. Um, you know, the same way it would be impressive in either of these two cars I just mentioned and suggested. That actually is something you can feel. So, if we compare apples to apples, it's, uh, it's notable. So let me add and say, you know, what is, what is the review? Well, again, it's cold, battery's not fully charged. I'm doing several more videos on this car, so I will have a much more point of view driving videos coming, and I'll talk about it. But um, just kind of my thoughts here, you know, it feels like the IMA is about 10 or 15% more powerful. Highway driving on the way home, I went to Atlanta to do this. I'm in Augusta, Georgia. Um, when I pushed the gas going up a hill and IMA kicked in, it just felt like it kicked in a little. Or what it feels like to me, it doesn't feel like the motor's stronger. What it feels like is, if you ever like had a tune, like so on my Fiesta here, I've done over 80 different tunes on that car. So when you have a tune, and one of the things you can change in the tune is your um, your throttle up to your your uh, how aggressive the throttle is. So throttle tip in is what they call that. And so let's say I push the throttle 30%, but I can tune the car, or the, you may be done from the factory, to make 30%, 50%. I don't know how linear the throttle is on this car, but let's say before 30% got you 30% of the actual throttle. Well, now it feels like 30% is like 50 or 60%. And of course, 100% would be beyond 100% because we added 42% current. It feels like the throttle has been more aggressively tuned, and then when you give it the beans, when you floor it, it's got more than it had before. That's how it feels. It just feels like it's got a little more juice. 10, 15% maybe, that's what it feels like. It's not race car fast by any means, but it's definitely quicker than it was. No side effects, no miles per gallon side effects unless you just stay on it all the time. And hey, for the money, it's just a fun little thing to do to your old hybrid car. And, you know, if nothing else, I mean, I'm always trying to make my cars faster. Um, I did it with that. And if nothing else, it now even more can wear the name Eco Rocket. Next video coming up, I'm going to talk about something else I just had installed. My clutch switch. Hey, hope this was uh, entertaining and thought-provoking. Check out the links for more info, and have a Merry Christmas. Peace and goodwill to you.